um, the importance of listening and learning about each other. So I think that's been huge. I think personally for me too, um, it's been, it's allowed me to slow down even with my family. Um, being home for dinner and eating at a table uh, and hearing how their day was rather than thinking about who, what recruits I have to call or where I got to go and actually being present. And so I think that's been, it's, uh, it's, it's been an amazing learning experience. I'm still learning, but to be able to slow down, be more aware and uh, has been a really uh, a great thing for me. And I think it's been a great thing for a lot of people. And, and if I can ask just uh, a follow up to that, um, I guess as a person who is in a leadership position, yeah. just um, how are you going to use your role maybe going forward? Well, a big thing, Percy, great question. We've been doing a lot of team meetings. Uh, we're lucky to have a, a, our faculty athletic rep as well as a professor like Dr. Alexis Harris has been meeting with our team and having discussions. Um, we've discussed, uh, obviously, uh, the George Floyd and Jacob Blake um, tragic and uh, just hearing what our players are feeling and talking to them, that's been one part. And then listening to them, and then how can we make a difference? And so we've, we spent last week talking about voting um, and the impact that we can make. And uh, so we've, we've got some stuff coming up that I think is really exciting um, where our program, I know the school, I know the Pac-12 is gonna really try to get people out there to vote, um, try to use our platform as a team to really encourage that, that that's where real change will be made. And then we, we actually did a, almost like a basic civics 101 course, uh, how certain decisions are made and what to look for in voting. And um, Dr. Harris did an incredible job. I'm 51 years old and it was, it was learning, you know, it was a learning experience for me. And so to understand a, an 18, 19 year old, 20 year old kid to really understand how to make a difference. If, if you believe in police reform, how, who is their boss? Uh, who do you have to vote for? How do you find out uh, what they believe or what the, you know, all those types of things, uh, how to read a, uh, this is a primary, <laughs> you know, just like, you know, I, there's a thousand names here. I don't know. So, and really understanding it and, and really educating our kids. And, and I think that's the most important thing is you're constantly educating. You're constantly listening and learning. And that's how you have growth. And that's what we've been focused on. All right, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Percy. Uh, Tim, I'm going to go to you since I know you've got to jump off in a bit. So, Tim, do you got anything you? Yeah, I got a couple of things. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? How are you? I'm good. Um, the two, two separate things. One, I'm curious, how many of your kids are already registered to vote and, and how many still need to go through that process? Well, I was just, I was just going to say that to, uh, with, with Percy is uh, last week, we're 46 for 46. And that goes back to players, coaches, our whole GA staff, Ashley, uh, everybody, 46 for 46. And uh, that was that was really exciting for us to uh, to get there to get to that point. We've got a couple out of state uh, players that we made sure uh, you know now it's getting absentee ballots and all those types of of things and actually educating them. Dr. Harris had a link. She had everything organized for our players uh, going in to making sure it was uh, that we're all good. So 46 out of 46. Cool. Um, and then the the conference announced this afternoon some. Uh, accelerated testing uh, protocols and in a new partnership. I'm wondering where do you feel like your optimism is about successfully having a season? And if you think at this point, a season, this, this testing advancement will allow the season to potentially start sooner than the January 1st date that was originally announced. I think the partnership with the PAC 12 with Crudell and, and, and getting, you know, the rapid testing, I mean, that's the key to this whole thing, right? Uh, you need to not only have rapid testing, it's got to be affordable, and then you got to be able to get quick results. And if you can do that, then you can 
knowing that if you're going into practices and games that you know that that you're not going to be able to get infected. And so um, I'm that's it's, it's I'm really optimistic, especially with the way, you know, science just moves so fast. Uh, you know, it's just it's constantly uh, rapidly changing in a good way. And the more we learn about this, this, uh, this disease. So it's, uh, I, I'm very optimistic that we'll have a season. I think, uh, I think we definitely will, especially with the, the way that this testing and this partnership has, has moved forward. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Lauren, I'm coming to you next. Should they should go? Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so I was just wondering, I mean, what has your with everything going on with the COVID situation, what does your schedule and workouts kind of look like over the summer and what's kind of your plan moving forward here? Well, we were just lucky, really fortunate. Uh, obviously we have a great medical team and staff and um, we were allowed to have a couple pods, a uh, limited amount of, of players. Uh, they would be separated, but we, we were able to have them on campus and give them some sort of routine. And so we would have uh, lifting uh, for an hour uh, each day, and then we would be allowed to have, uh, uh, you know, an hour, or, excuse me, 45 minutes a day um, to be able to work with our, our guys on the court, um, obviously with social distancing, more shots, more routine-ish type of different things. And then um, we were allowed to later have open gym hours for those pods. They would still stay in the pods. So they, it gave them an opportunity to go back and shoot some foul shots or have another place to just go. We try to keep them uh, as routine as possible and have them have options. So we just finished, I think it was week, close to week six today that we've had the guys and I give, you know, our leadership, our medical team, Jen Cohen, uh, you know, allowing our players to be here has been huge for them. Has there been, do you feel any extra challenge to kind of keeping a focus when you don't know when the season's going to start, if the season's going to start? Um, has there been any, any extra challenge there? I think the biggest message we've been just going with is we can, the only thing that we can control is try to get them focused on we can control today and how can we get better. And then how, and then when we leave, it's like, okay, now you have to be disciplined enough to to keep your teammates and everybody else safe by being responsible, wear a mask and, you know, just those, those daily reminders uh, with the guys, but, you know, control the day, you know, we're going to have a season. I really believe that. And the key is, is that when you have that opportunity to have that season or when it starts that we're ready to do it. And so um, to keep them focused on that. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. All right. Chris Fetters coming at you. Thanks, Ashley. Yep. Uh, great to see you, Hop. Um, I was curious. It is weird to kind of even talk about basketball, I guess, type stuff. But I am kind of curious with um, with Quad A now um, back in, and you've got waiver requests, I assume, for Eric Stevenson and um, and uh, Cole Dajima. Dajima, yeah. Um, was just curious how that process has gone along. You know what? We're just it's in the it's in the process right now. Uh, we put the waivers in and, and just waiting, just like everybody else. Okay. And Quade, just having him back. Oh uh, yeah, Quade's he's great. Quade's done really good academically. He's uh, he turned his set. Look back, and he looks great right now, and was has been you know really really proud of him. Um, you know everybody responds differently, and the way he responded, we we're put huge smiles on our faces and stepped up as a, uh, a great thing and has stepped into a leadership role. So really proud of him. Also really curious, just generally speaking with, I mean, it just feels like uh, we talked to the football coaches about recruiting and how this has just turned everything on its head. And especially with, with very little in terms of evaluation periods and what have you in terms of in-person stuff, how has that really affected you guys going forward? Just kind of roster management and, and all that kind of stuff. Best players, the best recruits are the players on your team. And, uh, you know, you've got to work on getting them better. Uh, I think, um, you know, recruiting's one thing. You know, it's there's ratings and there's this and there's that. And, you know, um, got to get the right guys. I think we've got, you know, the recruiting class ended up being uh, a couple transfers, you know, guys that uh, were, you know, locally but really talented players. and 
really excited about their growth uh, on the recruiting front. You know, it's, it's, it's equal playing field. No one's able to get ahead on anybody else uh, during these strange times, uh, uncertain times. So, you know, a lot of it's phone work, a lot of it's, you know, Zoom calls, those types of things. But our focus has really been how do we get these guys better? Returning some guys that got a lot of experience last year. And um, like I said, you win some, you lose some, but the best recruits you have are the players on your team. Hug them, love them up, educate them, uh, get them in that system. And uh, we've seen a lot of growth from these guys. Really excited about this team. Thanks, Hulk. All right, I'm gonna go to Dan Rayley next. Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? I am good for being on house arrest. <laughs> hey, um, can, uh, with your two transfers, is there any reason to think that they won't become uh, waiver eligible? And if they don't, you seem a little light on scholarships. What will you do if they don't become eligible? Well, we, uh... You know, we, we, we feel good about our guys, um, you know, young guys, obviously, uh, you know, Eric was a, um, had two years of experience already. So he's got experience at the highest level. Cole has one year. He didn't play a lot, but really talented. Uh, Nate Pryor has, has, has done a really good job. He's an exciting uh, talent. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, if those, we, we have plenty of players. I mean, I, I look at, you know, a guy like Raekwon, some of the moments he had last year. I look at Marcus Tahonis, who, and people forget Marcus played 24 minutes a game. He was averaging seven or close to eight a game. He shot 40% from the three point line and he didn't even have a whole season getting ready. So um, those guys, you know, could help us and impact us, but, you know, we have enough for sure. Um, so if that happens, we're ready for it. Um, have a lot of belief in a lot of guys. Is there any reason to think that they won't get the waivers? Because I've seen all kinds of players getting them elsewhere. Yeah, you know what, with the NCAA, it's, you know, I don't know, you know, um, how the decisions are being made. They have good kids. And uh, we're just going to, you know, wait and see what they uh, come up with. But, you know, we obviously want them to, to get their waivers. If they don't, we're, we're, we're fine. Thank Anything you. else, Dan? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. All right. Chris Francis. Anything from you, Chris? Yes, Ashley. Thank you. Hey, Coach Hoppe. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. Um, you know, a lot's been made about the Pac-12 not playing football and the disadvantage that might cause, whether it's perception or whatever. I'm just curious what you think about the perception of the conference in all of this handling of the COVID situation and whether it affects your basketball team at all. Well, I think the perception, um, you know, obviously everybody has a different opinion. And I don't think, I think the great thing about the leadership in our, uh, in our league is they were more worried, you know, that everything, every decision that's been made has been based on the health and wellness of the student athlete. And, you know, so perception or not perception or the, the bottom line is, is I think that's the greatest way to be. And, uh, you know, this doesn't work. You know, this thing is real. I think there is, you know, the, the COVID is just, there's a lot of unknowns. It's kind of, I love when, they, I love when people say, well, it's got long-term effects. Well, <laughs> how long has it been around? <laughs> Four months. How do we know it has long-term effects? And so there, there's so many unknowns. So, uh, you know, the decisions that have been made, I mean, everybody wants to play. I mean, if you ask any player, they're going to say, yes, I want to play. It's the responsibility of the league and the, the, the CEOs and everybody else, the ADs, and us to say, is this a safe place? Um, are we putting our guys in the best opportunity to be the safest possible? And um, at that time, it was no, and I respect that. It's, uh, you know, if my son was one of the players, which he is, uh, that's, that's how I would want them looking at, at, at my son. And then how are you sort of dealing with your players in terms of the, the roller coaster they've probably been on? We're, we're, you know, our season got canceled at the end. We don't know when we're playing. We, this new testing's coming out. We don't, yeah. it's, kind of, it's such a roller coaster. Yeah, and again, I, like I said earlier, I think the biggest thing is, is listen, you can control today. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's so easy to say to these kids, but you, it's got to be rapid. You know, they talk about rapid testing. It's rapid communicating. You're, you're constantly reinforcing that. You know, it's like the same thing. It's like you have to reinforce to them every day to be safe when they leave because it's so easy to get caught up like you feel comfortable and you put yourself in a bad situation. So we've just been just trying to hammer away that 
we're going to control today. We're going to get better um, individually, collectively. Uh, use the, this time to 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 be around people and to live a normal uh, existence with the help of our uh, medical team and, and our staff. So that's been really good. And you know what? I be- really believe we're having a season, and I told them that. And the key is is we can sit there and and if you just you know every day thinking about are we going to play are we not going to play rather than how I got to get better and then when we do have an opportunity to play we're going to be ready to go and that's kind of been our message and the way that we've been messaging every day all right uh bill swartz you are up next my friend coach number one i can't believe you're 51 <laughs> Yeah, you're, it sounds like a lot of trust with uh, kids 18 to 21 to do the right thing. We're seeing it at college campuses all over America. It's why you go to college, part of the reason, to socialize. So mm-hmm. how do you convince these guys that just don't do the risky behavior? Stay safe. You know, it's hard, um, you know, but you just, you know, all, as educators, uh, leaders, you, you just, you got to, you got to teach them right for wrong and you got to give them, you know, explanations and you know, it's like being part of a team. Everybody has to sacrifice a little bit, right, for the betterment of the team. And, you know, it's just the messaging. It's the same thing. Uh, you know, we can't really control what you're going to do when you leave here. But, but you know, you always have to take into consideration other people. It's very important uh, that you consider other people and that you're disciplined. You know, I look at our, our staff and, and, you know, it's it's the younger generation. You're fine. But, you know, you could impact uh, my family. You could impact uh, Coach Hobby's family, Coach Dollar's family, Coach Rice's family, or Coach Conway's, and so to let them understand uh, the significance of, of of making a bad decision or putting yourself in a bad position in anything, there's a consequence, and so you know you can't control it, but you can educate them, and so we're constantly hammering down that message. But to your point, college kids will be college kids, just hopefully they're as responsible as possible. Mike, would there be a silver lining to starting the season? Thanksgiving, December, especially for your team, which had a lot of departures and moving parts? You know what? The silver lining would be um, that we, we, we're in an environment where we know that we're going to play and we're going to play safe. We know that we're going to have a season. Uh, know that you're, you're fighting for a Pac-12 championship, however that may be, and trying to build a resume to get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, that's, that's what everybody plays for and gets ready for. So, um, yeah, just to be able to play games in a safe environment where we can compete. And uh, that would definitely be silver lining for me. It didn't matter if it was a month later, two months later, or whatever it may be. Let us play some games. Thank right. you. I'm going to try to unmute Kim. And if not, I have his questions for him. I don't think it's going to work. So this is from Kim Grinnells. Um, he says, all three new guys are local. How much influence did being back home have on their decision to join Washington? You know, we had recruited both of them. Um, uh, when we first started, uh, Eric Stevenson, we were right there, and he decided to go somewhere else. We got in a little late. And then Cole Bajima, uh, same type of situation. Um, and so I think when they, you know, with COVID and everything going on, I think they – when they were thinking about maybe getting closer home to their families, we had an option as well as a couple of other schools that were locally. And, uh, you know, the relationship was already built and uh, our staff has got great relationships. They're able to, to get them to come um, back and uh, just really get to uh, Washington kids along with Nate Pryor and in terms of the guys new players and my son so you got four from the state and uh, really excited about them uh, not only as players but as people and really excited to to move forward so still had the recruiting process though we had that we had we had to recruit them for sure he also asked if you wakeboard or water ski well, I'll share with everybody during the COVID thing, I've been spending a lot of time with my family in a, in a great way. It's been a, one of those slow down awareness pieces, like I was mentioning earlier. And uh, I got a, a boat share, which means I don't, I didn't buy a boat. I'm not, you know, I've never driven a boat, even though my father was a big boater. And uh, so a, a couple of days a week, we go out there on the Puget Sound and go out there. I learned how to drive, scared to death. It was like I was learning to drive again uh, in a boat. And it's just been an incredible to experience the beauty of, of Seattle and Washington and, and, uh, being out there is, is, you know, I really believe you live in the most beautiful place on the planet. Um, 
And so that's been a, also a big win for me too. Awesome. All right, we're gonna go to Anthony Edwards. Anthony should be free to go. Hi, right, this is Anthony uh, from the Daily UW. I was just wondering how many different schedules have has the team had since this whole thing started? Just go like this. I need to see your Nirvana shirt. Okay, now we're talking. Uh, even the kids like Nirvana. Now. Nirvana, yes, yes. Um, how many different schedules? Yeah. Well, we've been very consistent with, you know, um, uh, before summer school B had ended. I think it was three weeks or four weeks we had where the schedule was a little bit different. We had, there was a separation. So say one group lifted at 10 o'clock in the morning, then they came back uh, at 10.45, you know, they walk over. So it's 11 to 11.45, that would be their block. And then there would be an hour and a half block in between due to class schedules for the next group, for the next pod. And so after summer school B, we were able to just go uh, from 10 to 12 where one group would be lifting, one would be on the basketball court, and then they would flip flop. So it became more efficient. So there hasn't been too many. So there's really only been two. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I'm going to go to Jay. Jay. You got anything for us, Jay? Thanks, Ashley. Hi, Coach. Hi. When you look at uh, this year's current roster, what do you get most excited about? Uh, what jumps out to you about what you have? And are there any players there that you're excited to see take that, that next step? You know what? I'm excited about the whole group. Like I watch, you know, the way that Quad A Green has responded. It really excites me. Um, you know, he's he's one of the better guards in the country. He's a he's a high level talent. Seeing Nas Carr's development, um, Hamir Wright, like got a lot of experience. I look at Marcus Tahonis, a guy who I just was raving about last year. It just says he he just kept growing. And uh, Raekwon, our younger player, is really excited about that. Jamal Bay now will be a junior. Uh, Nate Roberts will will have a newer role. So there's a lot of, like, uh, the combination of um, seniors. You know, so last year it was like all these new – we were older, but it was like new guys. And now it's like, okay, now Hamir's a senior and Nas is a senior and, and, and Quad A is a senior. And then on top of that, Jamal Bay is now a junior. And, mix that in with some transfers. So there's a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy. And so, and another guy I'm just going to mention right now locally who I've been really excited about is Jerome Brooks. Um, he's been a guy that I really believe in this last five or six weeks that has really taken a step forward in terms of his development. And, um, you know, obviously everybody locally knows how good of a player he is. He's, he's been a guy that uh, I've been really, really excited about. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. All right. Lars, coming to you. You got anything, Lars? Uh, yes, I do. How's it going, Coach? Hi, how are you? Good. Um, so, I had something. Um, I really had a couple questions. Um, when I talked to Eric after he made his decision, one thing he highlighted was the plan that you had for him. I was just wondering if you could um, share what maybe that plan was. Um, well, the big thing is, what, is what we're, 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 we've been, we've been messing with a, a, a little, a, a little bit different of an offensive system, uh, a little bit more guard heavy, a little bit four out one and five out. Uh, and so, you know, Eric is a guy that I believe, you know, um, he's been a proven guy at the highest level. Um, he only shot 29% from the three-point line. He was really high earlier at Wichita State, but a guy who can really, really shoot it. And uh, and so I, I'm just really bullish about him, not only as a player, but I love – he's got a competitive spirit that is elite. And I think that rubs off on a lot of people, a toughness, a grittiness um, that we need. And so, um, you know, his plan – uh, just like the others is a guy that has been a proven scorer. You know, we're, we're going to try to have multiple playmakers out there. that can not only, you know, create, um, uh, but can really shoot. And that's where you're going to see a major change and he fits it perfectly. Awesome. And then my, uh, my, my only other question was now that you've been a head coach for a few years, what have you learned from the coaches on your bench? What, how do you evaluate your bench? Um, and is that something you, 
maybe thought about doing this off season, given that you brought pretty much everyone back. What was the question about my players or the coaches? Oh, the coaches, the coaches. Oh my God. I've learned so much from our coaches. Um, you know, I look back at, uh, you know, Dave Rice has, has, you know, experience and, and, um, He'll always, you know, there's the basics, but then there's something unique to Dave that he's experienced, that he's able to share that experience with me. Uh, Coach Dollar, uh, Cam is, you know, we just we just click. Like he'll come up with something um, that is so simple that he just makes me calm down. Like he's 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 got an incredible basketball mind, and and then Will Conroy, like. It, Will's a guy who I just, I love his energy every day and he just understands kids really does. Like he's got an incredible feel for people. And so sometimes when you get so locked in, he'll be like, coach, you know, we need to, you know, you got to think about this. And that's where they're all just so unique. And um, they're, they're all so different, but they all bring so much value that uh, they just, they hit me in so many different ways. Um, Cam is the guy who just, he hits you right in the middle. He just goes, boom, coach out, man. This is, it's just, it's awesome. Uh, I've learned so much. Awesome, thanks coach. Yeah. All right, I think I've hit everybody. Does anybody have any follow-up questions? Dan, I'm coming to you. If it'll do it. Oh, I love Zoom. How's that? I have a, oh, go ahead. There we go. Mike, I heard you say four newcomers, and I thought I heard you use the word son. Did I miss something? Is your son on this team? My, my son's going to be a walk-on on the team, yeah. Yeah? Well, what is he, a guard forward? Yeah, he's a guard. He's a young uh, a guard, yeah. Yeah. And okay. it's, it's, been, it's been fun. Seeing a different side of dad. I got to be dad when I got to go home, and I got to be coach when I'm, when I'm there. Yeah, I bet you're going to really run him too, aren't you? You know what I got? I got his mother. His mother always, you know, she elbows me when I walk in the front door if he's upset. But it's, it's you know what? It's it's been great. We got Dave Rice's son is is on the team. My son, and then you know, in normal cir circumstances, Will Conroy's children are always there. Coach Dollars, and so it's a great family environment. Love yeah. it. And your son's first name and and how hot, tall is he? It's Griff Hopkins. Griff. G R I F F. Yeah. Okay, and how tall? Uh, six three. Okay. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, actually, I had a question. Um, Hop, you mentioned with Eric a change with the offense, the one out. Um, how does that work with the guys that you're bringing back already on the team, especially compared to the offense that you guys did run with Isaiah and Jaden last year? I think, you know, it just, it goes back to, you know, we've, we've really messed around with positionless basketball, uh, you know, and having multiple guys that can make plays. And, um, Eric's just one of these guys um, that enhances what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, he's got some, he has a new, played, played and grew up with Marcus. A lot of these kids know each other from AU basketball and, and local tournaments. And, um, you know, iron sharpens iron. And, um, you know, his competitiveness is just one of these things that's going to make everybody better. And, uh, you know, when we have upperclassmen that are able to lead these underclassmen uh, into what they have to do workout wise, how do they improve? How are they in the weight room? How they handle their business? It just is everything that we do. And Eric's a perfect fit for that. And also real quick. Um, going to the defensive side, how much did you learn? Because I know, obviously, you tried to fit in a little man early, went back, obviously, to the zone. But did that did that kind of process kind of color your thoughts for how you're going to approach that thing this year? What I learned, what I learned is with a young team like we had last year with a lot of new faces, and we had some older guys, but it was they were young in terms of our system, that um, there was a learning curve. Um, and then I also, whenever you have options, different things to, to play, you don't never have full belief in the one thing. And so uh, the first couple of years, there was never an opportunity to play, <laughs> to play man. So it was like, okay, we either going to sink or swim. We got to get better at it. <laughs> There's no other option. And if you're going to play, and I think some of the younger guys, when they fr were frustrated and, they, and because the zone is hard to learn and there is a learning curve. 
um, that, you know, well, we should have played man or we should play more man. So there's this, this disconnect uh, with young players. So um, I did like the man. I think it can help us. I think this team with our positionless basketball could be a big part of what we do. Um, but I, I, I do believe if we have belief in both of them, that it becomes a really, really positive thing for this team. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. So I really didn't answer your question, Chris, because I don't like you hiding. <laughs> I know you're a Washington Cougar. No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, I, I, I'm kidding. Okay. Ashley's probably going, oh my God, Coach Hop is on his tangent. Nope. And have you guys ever had Topo Chico before? The sparkling mineral water? Yes. It's on a different planet. So good. Anybody else have any other questions? For, what is that? After we do our commercial for Topo Chico? All right. Well, thank you guys. And Jay, all can for I get Jay? Is Jay? Can Jay go back? Can I get Jay to say something because I saw something in the back of his, in his in his room that I got. I would love to to get it. How you doing, Coach? Great. Okay. What are you now looking? Turn at? around. What's it far back? It says it's like the dark. Yeah. Huskies Empires. Darth Vader. I'm loving that. <laughs> I'm loving that room. By the way. Thank you. Awesome. Tim Booth was very upset that he couldn't be at home because his background is all Pearl Jam stuff, which oh. he wanted you to see. So he was very upset that he couldn't be at home today with his Pearl Jam uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Everybody good? Thank you, Coach. Great. Hey, Thanks, guys, coach. stay safe. It's great to see all of you. And, uh, um, yeah, great seeing you. Percy. <laughs> Bye, guys. Percy's probably left. All right. He's probably like this Hopkins guy. I got to get off here. Yeah. No, I'm saying that.